Good day. Welcome to yet another session of EPG Partshala. The topic as we have seen on the screen today is services and high rise buildings. And under this you will find me addressing a very different type of uh, subject namely auditoriums. One would wonder what has auditorium got to do with a high rise building? Yes, uh, today it has become an extremely important affair to have an auditorium because basically unlike earlier uh, disciplines of management where you know it was virtually a scenario where once got uh, a topic, an order, any requirement, an instruction from an uh, authority and it was executed. Today, management has become more of a cohesive, coherent and co-generative activity. You find that every single item has to be debated, discussed and talked about before it is executed into action. Such meetings, such congregations have become very common and without them, the fruitful functioning of an organization is virtually impossible. You will find that even small organizations have training halls. These training halls is what is expected to be covered under this subject of auditorium. In the auditoriums, you have a place of congregation where people assemble. Generally, anybody can talk, but basically, an auditorium would differ from a meeting hall to the extent that the mic location is fixed, it is in one place and that becomes the source which has to be safeguarded from any other noise. So this is with the respect to try to explain the relevance of auditorium air conditioning to services in high rise buildings. For example, if one had the chance to go to let us say a Coca-Cola factory where you know you do something like about 15,000 bottles per minute of bottling. Machines are all automatic, the number of people required are very small and the activity is perhaps no different at all and not going to be different at all for a long time to come but yet it is not unusual to have at least two training sessions or three training sessions for one group of workers practically every day. You find that you know people sit together, congregate, they are being told how to use soap solutions, how they are being told to use um, water, how to be able to use minimum water, what quality of water, how to handle uh, switches on a particular equipment and these are kept refined and hammered away at people for such a long length of time to get absolute zero defect products. Now, if this is true for something like a Coca-Cola bottle which is sold for perhaps a few rupees on the market, it is also true about engineering equipment, something which is made by an NC machine, but the operator has to be trained. So, in other words, these congregation areas, auditoriums have become so important, hence the necessity to be able to see the difference between an air condition between the air conditioning of an auditorium and the air conditioning of a normal place. Basically, what we will now look at is what parameters set this air conditioning apart. Having established the importance of a congregation area, which is what we call which, which we will be calling auditorium, it now impinges upon us to make sure that an office space cannot be converted into an air, into an auditorium directly without having to do something on the air conditioning equipment. If an office space were used as an auditorium, the first thing one would find is that the CO2 content would rise, there will be definitely smell and beyond the smell there will be lack of oxygen. The CO2 content of such places would rise minimum uh, a few hundred above thousand which is the permitted limit. and the oxygen content would make, I mean you would not feel any adverse effect even if you occupied such areas for a day, but 
the attention you will be able to give to such areas would be very minimal. Your uh, attention levels will come down and obviously what one absorbs in such places would be minimal. The air conditioning load basically is characterized by a large amount of latent heat. Latent heat in an air conditioned space comes basically from two areas, the people and the fresh air that is taken in to keep these people comfortable. It follows that basically what would happen in a, in a normal space is that you would have occupancy to the extent of maybe say 100 square feet per person. In an auditorium, it increases to 10 square feet per person, which means the human load inside increases to something like about minimum 10 times. With this increase in latent load, basically the air quantity comes down. You can see that basically you will have in a comfort air conditioning, the air, con air quantity per ton would be roughly about 680 meter cube per hour per ton. Whereas in high lat latent heat loads like let us say uh, auditorium, one can go down to 300 and even lower figures for bigger auditoriums. This reduced air quantity would normally mean a different from normal air handling unit and the basic difference will be that the cooling coil inside the air handling unit will be deep. In other words, it has to be able to hold air to it for a longer period of time of travel so that it can pull out some more moisture which was contributing to the latent load. Here is a comparison. If you have a 1000 square meter office, you will have in it maximum 100 people sitting at about 10 square meters per person. Comparatively, if you had an auditorium, you will seat instead of 100 people, 1000 people. The increased latent load of these 1000 people would reflect in the fact that basically the CFM here would be 30,000 and the CFM here would be 2400. What does this different load pattern impose on the designer? The basic item is that when you design an auditorium, you might say that you know it is designed for 1000 people, but the 1000 people will be perhaps present only for a peak performance. It is not unlikely to say that you will have perhaps a very small crowd in quite a few instances. So in other words, the air conditioning equipment will have to be designed to be able to meet a very small load and yet cater to the large load. So in other words, the equipment has to be engineered to meet a varying load. The next important criteria would be that the equipment has to be quiet because basically in an auditorium, it is on, in, it's invariably audio communication which has to occur and there are powerful mics in the place. So any noise which comes into the area is likely to get amplified by the mic and make the speaker virtually unheard. The other aspect that is important is also to have draft free air conditioning because people will be sitting in their place in a continued area for a continued occupancy for a little longer than normal. So if there is a draft and he feels cold, he will just not be able to change his place. So out of a requirement for comfort, it is necessary to have air conditioning which is draft free. Now how does one meet a varying load? The answer is very simple having instead of having one large size equipment have two smaller equipment so that when the load is less than half one of the equipment cuts out and you have virtually half the air conditioning meeting the reduced load. Here you see there are two compressors meeting the cooling load requirement. If the load is less obviously one compressor could cut out and you could have a better fidelity to the load curve. The next aspect that we had talked of was quiet. Now equipment generally is made to uh, commercial standards and uh, asking for very special equipment, quiet equipment would mean normally a very expensive uh, custom made equipment which is normally not done. People tend to use normal equipment but would like to make it quiet enough for use in an auditorium. The figures that one would really like to worry about is in an office you have something like about 50 decibels noise limit which is perhaps permitted whereas in a good 
uh, auditorium it should be 35 40 or for a recording one it should be even lower to maybe 15 and 20. This is what we mean. That means we are looking at not making special equipment but using commercial equipment for this. How do you use commercial equipment and yet not hear it inside the auditorium? This is how it is. Noise by theory respects only two parameters mass and distance. So, if you have to attenuate a noise, you must put a mass between the source and the recipient like here. That means, you create a barrier in between or increase the distance between the two. That means, the source should be taken away from the recipient. Now, these are basic parameters which a designer must bear in mind. The more distance and the more mass you have in between, obviously, the area under consideration is going to be quieter. Schematically, this is what it would translate for air conditioning equipment. The cooling equipment, the noisy equipment, the chillers and all that are kept as far away as feasible. The air handling unit cannot be kept far away. It is kept in very close to the cooling area, but in between you put mass. So, here is a play of the two parameters that are required. Mass to attenuate A2 noise and distance to attenuate the chiller noise. Now, this is an extremely important criteria to be kept in mind while placing equipment and designing placement of equipment for an auditorium. Now, when we talk of mass and distance, we have presupposed that these, are, these parameters have all been taken care of. In other words, the roof and the side walls of the plant room have been lined, lined with absorbent material which attenuates the noise at the source. Next, the H room itself has to be lined. Ideally, the roof and all the four side walls, but at least two perpendicular side walls and the roof is a minimum requirement for A H room attention. Then, the supply duct which goes through the wall should be lined to attenuate any noise which gets into the duct. Minimum 6 meters of duct lining is a requirement. Likewise, the return air plane up 6 meters is a minimum requirement. Now, if this does not meet the requirement, that is if you have landed up with equipment which is still noisier than what you expect it to be, there are special requirements like, I mean special equipment available like silencers which one can put into the circuit. Now, these were parameters and numbers which I mentioned for a normal auditorium which is what you would see in most of the service buildings, most of the high rise buildings, but should you be stuck with an auditorium uh, which requires reduced noise levels, then those type of auditoriums are used for recording purposes and they become extremely uh, difficult to uh, work on because they carry within them mics. These mics today are so powerful that if one were to put a grasshopper on the mic and give it a leaf to eat, you know perhaps in a normal year you and me would never hear that noise, but on the mic this noise would be like a thunder and you and me would have to run out of the place as we would not be able to bear the noise. On the other end, a movie theater, a movie auditorium is perhaps not too important because instead of a mic you have a loudspeaker which is making a hell of a lot of noise and uh, part of the noise from the air conditioning equipment gets drowned in it. Now, the last parameter that one has to worry about from the physical aspects of air conditioning is the air conditioning should be draft free. Now, what is the normal draft that is allowed across a person in a comfort air conditioning? It is basically 25 feet per minute or 0.125 meters per second that is permitted. Now, this is so small that even tracing paper on your table will not flutter at these velocities. Now, that is the kind of velocity that is expected in an auditorium all over in all the seats. If it is higher than this, people will tend to feel cold and they would complain or they will perhaps not be able to complain and will have to sit and bear it for the entire period when they are in the auditorium, which is not healthy. Now, when you talk of draft fee, it also means one should, the designer should be very clear about where the air is best required by a person. The ideal is right in the face. The poorest is right on the neck, perhaps equal to having something on the ankle. So, in other words, having air at the ankle and having air at the nape of your neck is perhaps the last thing that you should look for in an auditorium. So, in other words, to get draft free air, 
you must know the type of air outlets that are available in the armory of an air conditioning engineer. One is the sidewall grill, which is very commonly seen. A sidewall grill works on a principle of jet displacement of air and is one of the most gr difficult grills to be able to place for a draft free requirement. Because basically the velocities that come out are very high and they are sort of you know split. It is not like a laser you know where it runs in a single straight line. It basically runs as a jet. So, more or less very difficult to be able to exclude the jet from the occupied area. This is best done by keeping the jet grills higher than occupied area. So, in other words air conditioned air is dissipated into the unoccupied zone. Now, this might look like a contradiction, but it is an essential requirement. Good supply air design calls for air to be discharged in the unoccupied zone and the high air movement caused by it will give you induction in the occupied zone. This slide shows a diffuser in place of a grill. Diffusers have the advantage that they tend to throw air parallel to the ceiling in place of perpendicular to the wall as was shown in the earlier slide. These are easier to make draft free, they call for a little extra ducting, but they are perhaps the best. Now, looking at what we had supply air grills and the ceiling diffusers, these two slides show you how they can be used. In the first slide that you see here, you have a sidewall grill, sidewall grill. To make it draft free, you will notice that air is ideally discharged upward so that it does not reach the occupied people directly at all. In the diffuser, it automatically takes place. The air is discharged parallel to the ceiling and virtually you have no draft in the occupied area. Let me summarize what I have mentioned up to now. The chillers are to be kept far away from the air handling unit. The air handling unit should be separated from the air conditioned space by preferably an expansion joint or at least a very heavy wall should be used between the two. The first grill from the air handling unit should be minimum 20 meters from the fan. That means 60 to 70 feet away from the fan so that the fan noise gets attenuated by the lining inside the duct. And if this does not meet the requirement, if by chance you have been stuck with equipment which perhaps does not perform or does not do, you need to add silencers to be able to get the best of your equipment. Having talked two important parameters which identify uh, normal air conditioning equipment and its placement in an auditorium, it does not mean that the normal factors which are done for normal air conditioning have to be overlooked. The normal factors are again very important, but the enforcement will be a little more rigid. In a normal air conditioning for a let us say a general office, if noise levels climb up from 45 to sometimes as high as 55, people just do not notice because basically hard floors, hard walls have become the order of the day and if it has a hard ceiling like jib board and all that, the noise levels tend to climb particularly if it is something like a call center application where audio is always allowed for and expected. But on the other hand, if for instance you are looking at a normal office, normal air conditioning would have definitely a requirement on attenuation of the AC noise. I will run through basically what is done even for normal air conditioning and the intention of this presentation would be that this is definitely required and the earlier requirement of mass and distance is actually an extra over and above what you now see on this slide. Let us run through the basic requirements of the noise attenuation done on normal equipment. I have on this slide basically five parameters which are listed. This are done for normal air conditioning basically because the equipment that you might get on the day you install it, it is good, it might meet your requirements. Even with the best of bearings, even with the best of greasing, even with the best of maintenance, over a period of time, the noise tends to increase and as it increases very gradually, people who are in charge of maintenance tend to overlook. 
until at one point of time they find that the noise levels have risen so high. So to overcome this sort of aging, this sort of uh, uh, effect which you know occurs on the equipment, it is nice for a designer to put in an attenuation devices which will basically help to smoothen out these kind of peaks which may develop. The most basic requirement in a good plant room is that the roof and the side walls should be lined. Now roof lining is one of the most effective devices because regardless of where the source of sound may be. For instance in a plant room you might have a pump, you might have a compressor, you might have let us say a valve which is making noise. Now if you line the roof it is a good chance that any of these equipment will have I mean will be in direct line of uh, communication with the roof and since noise travels in a straight line the noise emanated by this equipment at its first reflection will tend to get reduced if you line up the room. The lining basically requires fibrous material and a porous exterior which will permit you to clean the surface but yet allow the noise to go through the holes and get on to the uh, fiber, fibrous material. Noise as you would all know can be varying from anything like 100 cycles to 8000 cycles. 100 cycles would be like the noise you hear from a drum. If Shivamani were to come here and drum, yes, it will be something like maybe 100 cycles. But if you were to get a veena player to come and strum the strings of a veena, it might be as low as, I mean as high as 8000 cycles. So, whereas speech would be in the neighborhood of something like about 4000 cycles in a mean. Now, with such a big spectrum of noise available inside, you have to have an attenuation media which will be able to attenuate any of these noises. On the low end, you have something like 100 cycles. Now, 100 cycles kind of noise can be attenuated only by an air gap. On the other hand, uh, the higher frequencies, anything from 3 to 8000 cycles will require fibers of different lengths. So that depending on what frequency impacts the fiber, that fiber will tend to go into resonance and kill the noise. So in other words, you choose a material like maybe Spintex which is rock wool or fiberglass which is actually fibered glass, bind it with resin and place it in a manner that it is 2 inches away from a wall. You create the gap by putting a timber frame or an aluminum frame and a chicken wire mesh so that you have an air gap created. After that you put 50 mm or 2 inches of this fibrous material and then face it with the perforated sheet of GI or aluminum. Basically, this gives you the ab ability to be able to clean the surface of any dirt, but yet the holes in the material will allow the noise to go through and get its, I mean, and select a fiber which is in resonance with its own frequency to attenuate, vibrate, and lead to the killing of the noise. And behind this, you have an air gap which is required to attenuate the low frequencies. Now this kind of lining is available custom made in panels or it can be built at site and this is what is meant by lining the roof and the walls of the plant room. This lining can be expensive, it will be something like maybe say anything from a thousand rupees to two thousand rupees per uh, square meter and it occupies a little bit of space. So your AH room or your plant room has to be allowed for to be able to allow for the spatial thing and fit it in. For a very critical application, it is necessary to line all the four walls and the roof so that you know as I talked earlier, all the sources of equipment noise are close to the lining or if funds are at a premium, then one should line one long wall, one short wall and the roof. These are the minimum that could be lined. One would ideally like to line the floor, but this would lead to a tremendous amount of maintenance increase and it is never done. Now this lining is what is extended to the plant room and the AH room. In the ducts and all, the same lining is repeated except that perhaps you do not have an air gap, 
you just have fibrous material on the wall. These are generally situ, in situ uh, work which is being put in uh, for noise attenuation. If attenuation is required beyond these limits like it is called for in recording studios, one can look at basically silencers which are basically available as ready made equipment and uh, in various lengths, in various sizes and for various frequencies. These can be just bought off the shelf and added into the supply or the return air paths. I will come back to the first slide which I set out to highlight the points that I had made. You will now see on the screen the use of mass and distance in the parameters that are desired. The noisiest equipment basically the chillers, these are expected to be as far away as possible. This is what is meant here. Leave the maximum distance between the plant and the air handling unit room because the link between these two is purely by piping and piping very rarely suffers a larger amount of thermal loss. So, in other words if you are looking at a high rise building consider putting all this equipment which can be linked to this purely by two sets of pipes on the rooftop or in the basement which is quite far away from the air handling unit. Now, the air handling unit unfortunately cannot be shifted here because the link between an air handling unit and an air conditioned space is very large. You need a large supply air duct and you need a large space for return air duct. So, the moment you take this place away from the auditorium, you will find that this establishing this link becomes very difficult, very expensive and very space consuming. So, very rarely one tries to take away this equipment from this. It is not that this equipment is not noisy but because these links are very difficult to establish supply air, return air, likewise supply air, return air. These require something like uh, by a thumb rule one might say 1 square foot per ton of air conditioning. So, supposing you have let us say as we saw earlier a 100 tons of air conditioning required here, this is 50 tons, this is 50 tons. This 50 tons to be communicated to the hall and to be able to come back will require a 50 square feet cross section. So, you can imagine 50 square feet is 10 feet by 5 feet or something like 3 meters by 1.5 meters plus another 3 meters by 1.5 meters. So, if you put the air handling unit roof space away, you will definitely get good attenuation, but you will lose that kind of space. Now, for salvaging that amount of space, one what one does is keeps this here, but attenuates this noise from going here by adding mass. Now, the this noise was attenuated by distance whereas this noise is attenuated by mass. You make sure that you, this noise does not have a straight line path of travel directly to the mic which is kept here or the mic which is kept here. So, that basically you have a, a fair amount of attenuation. If you notice from the placement itself, the air handling unit has been kept at a stage away from this at a place away from the stage. That is with the view that this is the area where you have the mic which can show up the weaknesses of any noise at, uh, tra travel into the auditorium. So, the mic is away from the noise and it is further protected by this mass. So, again you have a player between mass and distance to get you the best results. I think with this it has highlighted with these factors if one lines these rooms properly, if uh, one lines uh, the systems of ducting properly and make sure that uses kind of diffusers that I have shown here. So, that you know you have air diffusion parallel to the ceiling, the air diffusion cutting the vane noise is far less when it travels to the mic, one would have a system which is par excellence. Thank you.